right, everybody, welcome back to the channel here. It is Thursday, January 19th, 2023. This video, we're going to do something a little different outside of the paint and body, uh, hydraulic stuff. We're going to be uh, restoring some aluminum seat moldings for my 60. Uh, posted these things on Instagram, got a lot of interest. A lot of people want to see the process. So a disclaimer here is I'm not a professional. I'm 100% self-taught when it comes to polishing aluminum and stainless something that I've been tinkering with over the past 15 or 20 years that I do to save some money. I've done it before for people to save them some money. So disclaimer here, I'm doing this stuff here in my backyard with some basic tools. So hope you guys enjoy this uh, little episode here. All right, the first thing that you have to establish when you want to restore some moldings is what are they made out of? So on these cars from the 50s and 60s, 70s, there's a few different metal finishes that are were on the car. You have, you have aluminum, you have stainless steel, you have chrome-plated steel, you have pot metal that's usually chrome-plated. Um, these are made out of anodized aluminum. The anodized is a protective coating, clear coat, I guess you can call it, that protects the anodized from, the aluminum, I should say, from oxidizing. Aluminum is going to oxidize as soon as it hits air. As soon as atmosphere reacts with it, it's anodized. Uh, it's uh, oxidizing on a microscopic level. So the anodized coating is basically a clear coat to protect it from dulling and, and, and discoloring and fading and stuff like that. Stainless is just as good as chrome. It's not exactly chrome, but you can get it to look 95% like chrome. Pop metal is pop metal that needs to be chrome plated. Um, one thing to understand though is uh, polished aluminum is not going to look like chrome plated. It's going to look close, it's going to be shiny, but it's not chrome plated. A lot of guys get confused when they start talking about all the chrome moldings on their car. A lot of that stuff, a lot of the stuff on a car is not even chrome. You have bumpers and door handles and mirrors, and that's probably it. The rest of the stuff is probably aluminum or stainless. But uh, you can't anodize steel, you can't anodize stainless steel, you don't anodize pop metal, you anodize aluminum. There's a lot of confusion out there, especially in the lowrider world, uh, about anodized stuff. A lot of the wire wheels, people think they're anodized because they're a different color. They're transparent powder coat is what they are. So just to clarify that, these, uh, these moldings are aluminum. Like I say, anodized, we're going to be removing the anodized coating and getting them down to raw aluminum and repolishing them. So there's a couple ways to remove the anodized coating. You can either chemically strip it using oven cleaner is popular or they sell chemicals by the gallon that you can use. But the gist of it is it's sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide, you soak it in, you spray it on, you let it sit, you rinse it off, you do it a few times and eventually you're gonna have raw aluminum. An alternative to that is using sandpaper. So with these particular things, I mean, the whole thing needs to be sanded. There's scratches everywhere. It's pretty amazing how this happens because these, these parts don't move. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is sanding all the coating off. Probably only going to be doing one piece because it'd be a really long video if I brought all these back to life. So I believe this is the piece I'm going to be working on. A couple dingers right there. Another dinger. Outside of that, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. First thing I like to do is wash them. A lot of dirt in the back, just to keep the keep the part clean. Wash them. This is one that I that I've already done. As you can see, I worked all the dents out. Actually, this piece was bent pretty nice. All right. So I posted these on Instagram here and, and YouTube, and I got a lot of interest on the process. Uh, you can do this at home. Like I say, a disclaimer, I'm 100% self-taught. I'm not a professional. I do this to save money using basic tools. So the first order of business is to get this thing washed. So I'll bring you guys back. 
All right, so I washed the part, soap and water, and then I went back and I circled all the dents that I can see with a with a permanent marker. So this is kind of where you you would establish your attention for detail. Um, you got to find the dents. It's kind of, it's, a, it's very similar to body work. You got to be able to see the dents so that you can remove the dents. So you can see there's plenty of dents. There's plenty of scratches. <laughs> Like I say, it's amazing how these things get so beat up. Another easier way is to just look on the back side. You can look at the back side and correlate with the front side of where the dents are. You can see how it kind of has a rainbow finish to it right under that light. That's the anodized coating. So like I say, the anodized is not exactly a clear coat. It does add some color to it. Um, people call it bright dipped. I personally don't know anywhere that re-anodizes. Most places leave them in raw aluminum, polished. Okay, so now that we established our dents, you can see how everything is dull, scratched. The whole piece is scratched everywhere. Pretty beat up, scratches up there. There's no rust, aluminum doesn't rust. Okay, so now we're gonna start working out the dents. So let me get set up here, we're gonna be using basic tool Got this on Eastwood a long time ago, probably 15 years ago or so. You can get it on eBay, it's pretty generic. Got this anvil on Eastwood. Also got this little this little little sucker right here. Use it sometimes, lock it in in a vise and work out some dents. But really basic tools, really, really basic. I mean, this is pretty much it. And you're just gonna be tapping them out. So let me get the little tripod set up, bring you guys back. <laughs> crease right there that's gonna take a little bit of you can also kind of massage it out with your with your finger a little bit aluminum is really soft so basically all you're doing is beating the dent out from the back you're gonna have some high spots we're gonna knock those down when it comes time to sand. But overall, that, that dent, that dent is pretty removed. You still have the crease there. It's gonna take a little bit of back and forth. We're gonna try this little one right here now.
as you can see when I'm hitting it I'm kind of rolling it because the anvil I have is is really basic Pretty good, we've got another doozy right here. It's a decent start, we gotta, I keep getting off camera here. We got a, about four of them right here that should bang out pretty easy. You can see them. You can see the dents. So these ain't gonna take much. one's really really minor it ain't gonna take much you'll, you'll hear the difference in the hit almost immediately whenever you guys buy uh, moldings that have been refinished you can always turn them on the back side you see all these hammer marks let you know that they've been reworked there's one right here Nothing on here, just scratches. This one's a little bit high. You can see where the metal aluminum was stretched. But we're going to knock it down with the block. I think that's just scratched up. So as you can see, we kind of roughed, in, roughed it in a little bit. This one's got a little bit of a wave right here, it feels like. Right here. All right, so what was that? 10 minutes. Spent 10 minutes on this, so it's kind of roughed in. It's going to need to go back again. But now what we're going to do is we're going to move to sanding it. So let me pause you guys and bring you guys back once I get set up. All right, so I've got... A little hand dur block and some 80 grit. Like I say, disclaimer, I don't know how the professionals do it. This is the way I do it. We're going to end up with the same results. So I'm probably have some sort of belt sander that they whip it by real quick, save a bunch of time. But when you're doing it on your own, when you have time, it doesn't matter how long it takes. So let's start by blocking this down and see what we find. Scoot on over to uh, to this one now. Okay. So 
So you can you can see the difference in the sanding, kind of like a high and a low spot, just like doing body work. But I'm thinking this needs to be tapped just a little more. have little outies from hammering on the anvil flat and it stretches the metal. Okay, you can see the crease that remained. That's going to be a doozy. We're going to need some more hammering on that. somewhere that's a low in between these two scratches right there need some tapping which we already did but it needs some more you can see the dent right there we missed So you got to remember when you're working on these pieces for these old cars, your end result, the, how good the product, how good the item is before you do this is going to determine how good the end result is. So you saw these things are pretty whooped. They're not going to be perfect when we're done, but they're going to they're going to be this one's going to be nice.
some of these may not need 80 grit. Like this one probably doesn't. A little more tap. Honestly, I don't even know what a shop of charge to restore these. I've never even paid for it. I'm guessing probably two to three hundred, maybe. It's got to be at least fifty bucks a piece. Like I said, I'm 100% on this. I'm 100% self-taught. I'm sure there's a faster way to do this. But I'm doing it by spending the least amount of money possible. So that I can spend money on other things. Couple more right here. See the way it's sanding, it kind of got some highs and lows. I think we just keep going with it and then knock them down. kind of seems it's actually high right here so 
that's what we got so far. I wash my hands here, and I bring you guys back. We're gonna we're gonna hit it with the DA. All right, so here we are. I got 80 grit on a six inch DA. I prefer a five inch, but I don't have 80 grit and five inch, so it's gonna be 80 grit on a six inch. We're gonna work up from 80 grit, 180, 220, 320. Uh, I believe. I have some 400 for a DA maybe, but 600 if not, and then 15, 2, and 3,000. So quite a bit of sanding, but we're going to be removing, removing all the anodized coating. One thing to note is when you're sanding with the DA, you have to spend more time to remove the scratches that you did with the block because the scratches with the block are more aggressive than the scratches with the DA. So sand this whole thing down with 80 grit. You guys check it out. Pick it up. Tap them out a little bit.
pretty good for the 80. We're going to go ahead and move to the 180. So I've got 186 inch DA. I wish I had small, but I don't. So the key here is we need to remove all the 80 grit scratches. So we went over the whole thing with 80 because there were some pretty deep scratches and we need to remove the scratches that are not as coarse as 80 grit. So we basically clear the foundation with 80 grit scratches. Now we're going to try and remove the 80 grit scratches with 180. Got some 320. Now the higher in the grits you go, the it's gonna start getting more reflective. Similar to wet sanding the car. Oh. Similar to wet sanding the car. Once you hit that 3000, you can almost you can already see yourself in it. About time for a new DA.
600 5 inch finally with the interface pad. round 3000 I just want to add if you don't have an air compressor or DA you can you could do this by hand you're going to be here a while but hey like I say it's not a foot race it's a marathon <laughs> That's 3,000 grit. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands. As you can see, we get pretty dirty. And bring you back, we're gonna get to buffing. All right, so here's my buffer. This is the Eastwood one horsepower professional buff motor with the stand. I got this thing on Eastwood. It was a couple hundred dollars. Uh, I've had it for a few years. I did spend some money on it. I did spend some money on the wheels. So, you know, that, that's gonna cost you. Um, but for years, I used a little Sears bench buffer that I had. It was like four inch wheels. I used that thing for like six years. And it, it did the same thing we're about to do right now. This one is just a little bit bigger. You can stack the wheels thicker, um, you know, for more area at a time to go faster. Like I say, it's not a foot race. So this is very old speed, 1800 or 36. I like to use a 36 to start. Use a, a spiral, uh, Buffing wheel, brown compound for aluminum. Now, like I say, I'm self-taught. Took me a long time to figure out these compounds. This was before YouTube. This was before Google was a thing. I was using all the wrong compounds, but I've learned that brown rouge for aluminum, gray for stainless, white to finish them off. But we're going to do brown on the spiral sewn, brown on the loose buff at a lower RPM. So guys, you want to use leather gloves, you want to use safety glasses. So let me get you guys set up on the tripod here. We're going to buff this thing out. It's going to go quick.
getting there. We're going to hit it on this other side now at a lower RPM. Softer wheel. Same rouge. Brown. wheels you want to find the sweet spot it's usually between four and five o'clock on the wheel you don't want to go past that if you go past that you get under the wheel it's going to rip the part out of your hand or it's going to dent it really bad <laughs> So here we are. It's actually the next day. It got dark on me. So I wanted to get these things out in the sun to show you guys the finished product. So you saw in the beginning of the video uh, what we started with, which was pretty similar to what this is. Nice and beat up. Dull, scratched, dented. And here's the end result. So 
it's got a little bit of a ripple, but really minor. Got to wipe the compound off. Got a little residue there. This is the other piece that I polished. And these are the two that I have left. Like I say, pretty dented. This is overall, overall not bad. I got a nice dinger here. But at least there's no dents in this little valley right there. That's going to be kind of hard to, to sand with. There's a little dinger here. But overall, these pieces aren't that bad. Show the back side here. Do a little hammer work. A little tapping it out like you guys saw in the video guys so just to recap here before we close the video out you guys can do this stuff at home yourself using these basic tools super primitive a little five dollar hammer and a flat anvil you don't even need the anvil you can actually do it on a on a vise or a piece of steel something like this as long as it's flat and uh, so all you're doing is tapping them out and um, like I said, with my bench buffer here, uh, well, before that, we use the DA. You don't have to use the DA. You can do the whole thing by hand. Um, just takes a little bit longer, you know, maybe twice as long, but still gets the job done. And the bench buffer or the buffer on the stand here, you don't have to buy one this expensive. You can buy something basic at Harbor Freight. Works just the same, may not last as long. Um, but uh, one thing I do want to note is that when you're, when you're going for the final buff, you can use the either white compound or the green. I opted for the green. I switched wheels, and I went with an older wheel that I have. It seemed like it was getting better results. It's a little more loose, and I went with green, which is a real delicate uh, compound. And on your final buff, you want to go the length of the part. Uh, if you try and go, for example, we'll use this as an example here on the final buff. If you're going like this, you may end up with some swirl marks. So it's best to go the length of the part as you go like that, up and down, up and down. And I mean, you saw the results. Like I say, they're not chrome, they're polished aluminum, but hey, look pretty good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video here. I'm gonna to get to work on these last two parts and wrap them up and keep them until the seats are, uh, seats are ready for them. So you guys stay tuned for more work and thanks for watching.